Here's our top five luxury compact SUV picks. Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do these throughout the year. So okay. if you like what you see here, it would be great if you could subscribe. Okay, so Andrea and I, we get the list together yeah. and we don't rank them from five to one. No, we? we've put them in alphabetical order. And here's why. Everybody has different needs and wants for each vehicle. And so we're going to go through the pros and cons of each and we'll let you decide which one you would put as number one. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, so you can decide. So one one person might really like value. Yeah. The other person puts a premium on sportiness. Another one puts it on room. So it's going to mm -hmm. be different for everybody. Reliability, smoother ride, a quiet cabin. We're going to go through it all. All right, and at the end, we have some honorable mentions. Yeah. Vehicles that didn't make the list but are still worth considering. And one of them is very important. You have to watch at the end because it's going to be replaced uh, very soon. So mm -hmm. let's get into it. Up first in alphabetical order is the Acura RDX. We always chose this one as our value trim. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, it still is the luxury compact SUV to beat in terms of price. But yeah. in Canada, oh, they've done something different, haven't they, Andrea? Yeah, you know, when I was doing a little research for this video, I noticed for 2023 in Canada, the RDX only has two trims and they are A-spec trims. So you've got a base A-spec and then you've got a platinum A-spec. So I put an email out to Acura because I thought maybe they just haven't added these trims for 2023 on the website. No, those are the only trims available. And the starting price of the Acura RDX is over $57,000. Now, comes with lots of features. You would be happy with that trim. But what about that price point that was under $50,000? Well, in the United States, it's a totally different story. They still have all of the entry level trims and it starts at just over $41,000 in the yeah. US. And that's why it's on the list is because it still is for many people around North America, the value trim. And the reason behind this, you probably have to back up just a little bit, is Honda has really put the prices up of the Honda vehicles, like the CRV in Canada now, mm -hmm. the top uh, CRV is 50 grand. Well, yeah. you couldn't have an Acura starting less, remember? It yeah. used to start less than yeah, that. For sure. And I think that's why they've done this. I remember the RDX starting in Canada at around $45,000, a great price point. Okay, let's get into why this vehicle is also great choice for maybe your family. First of all, it has uh, just one engine and it's a powerful turbo four cylinder engine. And that could be a negative as well because there is only one power train right no plug-in hybrid option or a hybrid just that gas model but it is terrific and i think that if you're a growing family out of all the vehicles in this segment you would be happy with the rdx that rear seat has a flat floor so if you have to take three across they'll be pretty comfortable back there and lots of cargo space there's some other negatives as well uh, acura has uh, married themselves to the trackpad yeah. infotainment system so they have the big screens and everybody likes that but the way you interact with it is through this silly trackpad um it's not our favorite people who own these tell us they get used to it mm -hmm. but something to consider that's why there's no five to one some people will like this some people won't and I really like the sporty drive and the steering isn't too heavy, not too light. It's a real balance. Um, I also think the interior is well done. You've got ultra suede and there's very little hard plastic, which I was surprised about. All right, you wanna do the specs? Yeah. The RDX has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a 10 speed automatic transmission. 272 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. Standard all-wheel drive in Canada. In the U.S., both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive options are available. All right, let's get into the pricing. The U.S. in a second. We'll start with Canada. It only starts with the A-spec in Canada, and it's just over $57,000. The base RDX in the United States is $41,500 and goes up to $53,500. Here's the fuel economy, 11 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.6 on the highway. That's 21 miles per gallon city, 27 miles per gallon highway. And our next vehicle alphabetically is Audi with the Q5. And so why is the Audi Q5 still on our list? Well, we call the Q5 the best all-rounder. It doesn't excel at anything. 
it just kind of finds that balance for people. It does a lot well. It's Audi's best-selling product, mm. and the one thing about it, ever since it came out, they haven't really changed the design that much mm. because one thing they found out from Audi owners, they like the way it looks. They like the size of the vehicle. So a lot of those components, when it was very first introduced, are yeah. still true today. Uh, it really is a great all-rounder. It delivers a luxury badge, yep. good room, decent power, and the price isn't crazy either. Yeah, and it really has a modern look to it. And, you know, from one Q5 to the next, you'll be hard pressed to know what year it is. And I think that that's a perk for many who keep their vehicles for a longer period of time. I do find that the interior needs some sort of a refresh. The screen that sits on top of the dash is a bit of an afterthought, in my opinion. And because Audi got rid of the dial at the center console to control that screen, they have some some weird storage solutions that really can't fit much of anything. Okay, so why did they do that? They went to a touch screen because everybody's using their phones. They want yeah. Android and Apple integration in the touch screen. And Audi found that the dial MMI controller wasn't the best for doing that. So they yeah. got rid of it, but they just left a big hole in the dash. You could put change in there, but it does kind of look like they didn't really think it through that mm -hmm. well. And you know we're going to see a more integrated screen in there like the Q3 and the Q7. And I think that Audi's virtual cockpit is probably one of the best in the business. This offers a sporty drive. I find the steering for myself to be a little bit too light, but that's also appealing to many. It's a great family vehicle mm -hmm. because people in the back seat, you know, it's not huge. It is in the compact class, but it's roomy yeah. enough. It's got good cargo space and it gives that sort of upscale vibe because it's a German uh, product. But yeah. you know what? It has a lot going for it, including you wouldn't think this, there's actually some good value. Mm -hmm. So let's get into the specs. The Q5 has four powertrain options. The base model is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a seven speed automatic transmission, 201 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque. The Q5 45 has the same powertrain, but more power, 261 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. The SQ5 has a 3-liter turbocharged V6 with 349 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. And then there's the Q5e, a plug-in hybrid with a combined 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. You get 37 kilometers, 23 miles of EV range. Let's get into pricing. We'll do Canada first and then flip to the United States. First up is the Q5 with the base engine is under 50 grand at $48,400. If you get the SQ5, it starts at $70,000 Canadian. And if you get the Q5e, that starts at $76,000 Canadian. Here's the pricing for the United States. The base model starts at just over $44,000. The SQ5 starts at $56,500, and the plug-in hybrid, the Q5e, starts at $57,500. Here's the fuel economy. The Q545 gets 10.6 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, 8.2 on the highway. That's 23 miles per gallon city, 29 miles per gallon highway. The SQ5 gets 12.5 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, 9.7 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway. The Q5e, that plug-in hybrid, gets 3.9 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers combined. That's 60 miles per gallon equivalent combined. Next up is the vehicle that started it all mm -hmm. for the luxury compact SUV the BMW X3. And it's a fantastic choice. It's a great all-rounder, but then if you want a performance model, you can get that with the X3. It is also a vehicle that is available with so many different engine choices, even yeah. a plug-in, but at its core, it's still like the Audi Q5, is just a great all-rounder for family duties. And it's gotten mm -hmm. Not really that much bigger on the outside, but much bigger on the inside over the years. Well, it offers a lot of rear legroom and cargo space. So once again, like the RDX, if you've got a growing family and you want to stick with this compact class and not move up to a midsize, the X3 is such a great choice. And I actually find that the X3 offers a smoother ride now than it did before. It used to have a bit of a firmer suspension and BMW has really tweaked that along with the steering that you can adjust the steering that it's a little bit heavier but also lighter. 
and it's still a great choice. As we mentioned, they invented this class. And they've kept the grill under control too for a BMW, <laughs> haven't they? It, yeah. it still looks really good, the X3. Some cons of the X3, I actually found that they had quite a bit of plastic mm -hmm. in it. I think it depends on you know what trim that you're getting. I think it's priced what fairly well. Oh yeah, even the seats, like they now come with Sensatec, which is actually not bad for a faux leather, but you've got to pay extra for Vernasca, and that's across the board on all BMW SUVs that they come with Sensatec now. Save your money on the mm -hmm. Vernasca leather. In our opinion, this premium, it's a premium price tag to get the Vernasca leather. Mm -hmm. It feels worse than the synthetic yeah. uh, leather. I would just go with the base leather or go all the way up to their top sort of higher yeah, level. Yeah, get, get the real leather. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're trying to keep your price point down, which you can do on the X3, you know, add a package here and there or an a la carte item. If you want to keep the price down, you can, but if you want all of those extras, my goodness, the X3 pricing can really climb as well. Okay, so the one I would pick is not the one most people pick. Mm. Most people go for the turbo four cylinder. That's the case with all of these vehicles. The one I would choose yep. is get it while you can, the inline six cylinder, that's the 40i. It's yeah. more expensive granted, but it comes already standard with a lot of M package goodies like suspension and steering. So that's in there and that engine, mwah, of all of these vehicles, I think is the sweetest. It is the sweetest, but you'll also pay for that sweet engine as well. <laughs> so uh, if it's within your budget, great. If it's not, that two liter turbocharged four cylinder is also a good one. Let's get into the specs. The X3 has four powertrains. The base, as we mentioned, is a two liter turbo four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 248 horsepower, but good torque, 258 pound feet. The M40i, the inline six, was 382 horsepower, and the M version of that engine is 503 horsepower. There's also a more efficient 30E plug-in hybrid with 288 horsepower. It gets 29 kilometers, just 18 miles of EV range. By the way, the plug-in is only sold in Canada, not in the US. Here's the pricing. We'll start with Canada first and then move on to the U.S. The base X3 starts at just over $55,000 and in the U.S. it's just over $46,000. Here's the fuel economy. The base model gets 11 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.4 on the highway. That's 21 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. The M40i gets 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 9 liters on the highway. That's 21 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. And the plug-in hybrid gets 3.9 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers combined. So you need to stick around. We've only got two more to go in our top five. We do have some honorable mentions. Vehicles didn't make the list, but they're still worth considering. Yeah. Next under the letter G is what? The Genesis GV70. Oh man, I remember driving that for the first time. I was so impressed with this model. So they have two engine choices. Actually, they're gonna have an EV uh, coming any moment now. Yeah. So they have a 2.5 liter turbo, four cylinder, mm -hmm. and they have a 3.5 liter V6 turbo. In our opinion, the base 2.5 liter is the one to get. It offers the best overall value. It does offer the best overall value. Uh, things have kind of changed with Genesis in Canada. You don't get that base trim that started at under $50,000 Canadian. Remember that one? Now the Genesis in Canada starts over $57,000. So you're kind of up with where that Acura RDX is now. But the thing is, you get a lot for your money. Those trims come loaded. Yeah, and you also get a more powerful engine. And the interior is arguably a nicer interior than the Acura as well. Yeah. And I think that um, it's just really, in my opinion, a little bit more polished in the Acura. Mm. And one of the main reasons is it has an all-wheel drive system that is a rear-wheel bias system, where the Acura has an all-wheel drive system that's based on kind of a front-wheel drive system. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a different driving dynamic, a a little more sporty, a little more German feeling in the Genesis. Some cons to it, you know, I don't love the center console and the way that it's laid out. You've got the dial shifter, but you also have the dial to control the touch screen. And I find that I get that mixed up once in a while. And I found that the seats are really comfortable in the Genesis and just that luxurious interior. I mean, it truly is a luxury experience. And not for a huge, huge, crazy price. Mm. 
Now you might find the seats in the back of the GV70 to be fairly small. It's definitely not one of the largest in this class. And the other thing about Genesis models is that they don't come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, mm. only wired. All right, let's get into the specs. The GV70 has three powertrain options, a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque, a 3.5 5 liter twin turbocharged V6 with 375 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. Finally, an electrified GV70 with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and up to 383 kilometers, 238 miles of EV range. It has 429 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. Pricing has not been announced yet for this model. Let's get into the pricing. The U.S. in a second. Here's Canada first. Two and a half liter turbo starts at fifty-seven and a half thousand dollars, and the three and a half liter turbo at seventy and a half thousand dollars. In the United States, the base model starts at just over forty-three thousand dollars, and the three and a half liter turbo starts at just over fifty-five thousand dollars. The base 2.5T fuel economy is 10.7 litres per 100 kilometre city, 8.4 on the highway. That's 22 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. The larger 3.5 litre turbo is 12.9 litres per 100 kilometres in the city, 10 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon on the highway. And our final vehicle, rounding out our top five list, is the Lexus NX with four powertrain options. You're probably thinking, hmm, is there something missing? Well, stick around. Mm -hmm. We're going to do those honorable mentions in just a second. So the NX, before it was updated for this uh, this year, yeah. was not our favorite. And it didn't make our list in the past. It did not. Yeah, and they have really turned things around at Lexus. And this now is a vehicle that has so many different engine yeah. and drive systems plus a much better car. And one of our favorite NX models is the hybrid. Not only is it fuel efficient, but it's priced really well. More of an affordable luxury premium hybrid option out there. Now some positives, well you've got the new Lexus infotainment system and a larger touchscreen is available but you know that 9.8 inch touchscreen on the base model of the hybrid and um, some of the other models it's still a really good size. It comes standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's an intuitive system to use and I think that Lexus did a really good job with it. Okay so you can get the base gas model, mm -hmm. you can get the hybrid, you you can get the plug-in as well and you can now get a new turbocharged four-cylinder engine. So as we mentioned there's lots of uh, vehicles to choose from. What doesn't change on all of them Andrea is the back seat isn't the biggest. No I, I think that's one of the downfalls. Back seat and cargo capacity you will really have to check that out in the NX. We've been driven around in an NX to get to an event. We found it to be quite comfortable back there but there isn't a ton of space I would say for car seats and for for growing teenagers. I would say the NX is also really good all-rounder except for the space issue and it's a really good option for people who want to buy something that's kind of luxurious and doesn't kill them at the fuel pumps. Now some cons, um, I actually find that the interior on the lower trims you know what, there's some extra piano black that I could do without and some hard plastic that I think that Lexus could make those lower trims maybe give it a little bit more of a luxury experience. And the other positive for this is you get Lexus on the steering wheel and the hood and that counts for mm -hmm. you know really solid reliability. So it's one of those vehicles you could buy and you could sleep well at night. One thing I'd like to add is that the NX comes with run flat tires. So double check that. If you are on um, pretty rough pavement, you're gonna notice that the sound level of the cabin go up a bit. But we did find driving it in Vancouver that it wasn't that loud and, and we thought it was a much better experience than when we were on the highway, for example, in Toronto. All right, let's get into the specs. The NX has four powertrain options. The NX 250 with a 2.5 liter four cylinder, an eight speed automatic transmission, 203 horsepower, and 184 pound feet of torque. The 350 has a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder, also with an eight speed automatic transmission, 275 horsepower, and 317 pound feet of torque. The 350H, the hybrid model, has a 2.5 liter four cylinder with Lexus 
hybrid drive matched to an eCVT. It is a combined 240 horsepower. The 450H, the plug-in hybrid model, a 2.5 liter four-cylinder with Lexus plug-in hybrid drive, an eCVT and a combined 304 total system horsepower, 61 kilometers, 37 miles of EV range. All models are all-wheel drive except the NX250. There is a front-wheel drive option in the U.S. Let's get into pricing. The U.S. in a moment. First Canada. All of the numbers are on the screen. The base 250 starts at just under $48,000. In the United States, the base model starts at just over $40,000. Let's get into the fuel economy with the 250 all-wheel drive. 9.4 liters per 100 kilometer city, 7.4 on the highway. That's 25 miles per gallon city, 32 miles per gallon highway. Next is the 350, that's the turbo four cylinder, 10.5 liters per 100 kilometer city, 8.3 on the highway. That's 22 miles per gallon city, 29 miles per gallon highway. The hybrid is only 5.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.4 on the highway. That's 41 miles per gallon in the city, 37 miles per gallon on the highway. The plug-in version of the hybrid gets 2.8 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers. That's 84 miles per gallon equivalent combined. Now, that's our top five list. Those are the ones that we think will appeal to many buyers. You're probably thinking to yourself, Andrea and Zach, where is that Porsche Macan? And what about the Mercedes-Benz GLC? And what about the Stelvio? All right, so we'll do the Mercedes first. Mercedes-Benz is going to be introducing a brand new GLC yeah. just before summer. So we didn't put it in because we're gonna wait till we drive it and then we can always redo this video. As Zach said, there is a new GLC model coming this year, but surprisingly, this one holds up and is a great choice. The interior feels luxurious, the drive is refined, you've got that quick acceleration, and the cabin is well insulated. The base model has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a nine speed automatic transmission, 255 horsepower, and 273 pound feet of torque. It has a starting price of just over $51,500 in Canada and just over $45,500 in the US. Well, here's one if you want to have a lot of fun the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. It has two powertrain options a two liter turbo four cylinder and an eight speed automatic transmission with 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque. It is a very powerful quattrofolio version of the Stelvio with 505 horsepower. A starting price of $59,000 in Canada and $48,500 in the United States. A favorite of ours is the Porsche Macan. It didn't make our list, even though the base model is priced well, once you start adding packages and a la carte items, it really climbs and becomes an unaffordable option for many. There are three powertrain options. The base has a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a seven speed automatic transmission, 261 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Other models available include the Macan S with 375 horsepower and the GTS with 434 horsepower. A Macan EV is coming soon. And the last of our honorable mentions is the Volvo XC60 with three powertrain options, including, if you want it, a plug-in hybrid model. This is an elegant and sophisticated looking vehicle on the outside and the inside. The base four-cylinder powertrains are matched to an eight-speed automatic, and it has either a 247 horsepower engine or a 295 horsepower engine. The plug-in hybrid model has 455 horsepower, and you get 58 kilometers or 36 miles of EV range. And the starting price of the Volvo XC60 is $51,500 in Canada and $43,500 in the United States. So tell us what you think. And you're going to tell us which one you would pick and yeah. why. It might be price, it might be space, it might be power, it might be handling, it might be, you know, who knows? Reliability. It could be any of those. Yeah. So that's why we did it this way. And then what else are they have to do? Well, you got to subscribe, hit that notification bell. You'll be notified when all of our reviews drop. We put out a lot of different content each week. Um, and I think that you'll really enjoy it. And also follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. I always put a sneak peek out of what's coming up what vehicles we're reviewing and when all those videos drop. And we'll see you in the next one.